a pretty cool lock that I got from Talanpik. It's a Spanish brand, Tesa, consisting of two round cylinders connected by two rods. And we have one side with a hole and the other side without. And the hole is used for um, separating these two parts. So what you have to do is you have to insert um, a needle or a nail or so. And then use the key, turn it 180 degree to the right. You can feel some resistance and then it separates. <laughs> yeah, here we have some uh, grooves on both ruts and these are locked in place by an internal locking mechanism which we can see here. Ah, you can see now it's kind of locked up and now it's open. Locked up, open. Also turns the other way around. Yeah, pretty cool mechanism. <laughs> um, my plan for this lock is to pick it for you quickly because it's not really difficult. Ow, should snap together. And then I'll take it apart and we will look inside, have a look at the pins. And I try to remove the outer sleeve. You can see it's um, locked here with this um, dent. So we can inspect the mechanism that locks both places, uh, both halves uh, together. Um, looking at the key, we can see that we have some wild bidding here. However, these two deep cutouts do not participate in the picking, so to speak. The key pins are already uh, so long that uh, they they clear the shear line by by itself, so no picking required. What we have to pick is uh, two, uh, four, and one, and the lock opens. So let me clamp it in a vise, and I'll be right back with the picking. Yeah, here's the lock clamped in a vise, um, and um, again I show you the key. Pretty cool bidding. Lock works, no trouble. And I use a thick Peterson pick in 25 thousandths to pick the pins by going at an angle and picking it sideways like this. So there are holes here drilled in the plug to accept the pins and I can use these holes to nicely uh, put my uh, pick in there. So, tensional lock with a 1.3 millimeter pry bar, also from Peterson, and start. So, one is loose, two is binding. Gonna click, three is all the way down and solid, and here we are on four. four. Hmm. I might have overset something, feel a little bit weird. Um, of course I have picked this lock before so I know what to expect. One is loose, two is binding. Nice click. So this is two. We have to carefully go from one chamber to the other. In between you would try to pick the warding, which is not good. So I think this is four. Yeah, it's moving. And I'm not sure. One gave me a tiny click, but not a very satisfying click. Not sure what I did. So I feel three not down anymore. I think I've overset three. So three oversets easily. So I use heavy tension now. Two. I leave three alone. Advance to four right away. And one, and it should open. This was actually my, I don't know, fifth or sixth attempt to pick it um, uh, quickly for you on camera. And I think the difference to um, the picking not on camera was that I um, tried to feel the pins one by one because I knew how to pick it so I um, skipped three in the process of picking when I um, 
pick it off camera, but here I wanted to um, replicate my initial picking and touching three actually overset the um, the core or overset the pin stack. So I picked two. I I, I felt one is one is loose. I picked two, and I tested three. And by testing three, I think I overset it, and four wasn't binding anymore. Um, if you recognize this and if you're smart enough, then you could um, leave out testing three, so two, four, one, and the lock opens because three and five does not need picking at all. And uh, as it looks like, just probing this pin causes an overset and the lock uh, will not open anymore. Anyway, let's take it apart and look inside. give you a close-up very nice pins but just standard drivers and key pins with a little serration as an overset trap maybe against uh, bumping or raking I don't know so we have the core or the, the plug with a groove in the middle not sure why this is the case um, and no modifications here all round and smooth then Moving over to the housing or to the Bible, we can see there is um, something sticking out here. And this is connected to the holding mechanism for the two rods of the other half. Um, yeah. Let me try to get the sleeve off and we will look underneath. After a little bit of fiddling I got this dent bent back. I had to poke in the fourth hole with a thick piece of wire and I knocked on the lock with a rubber hammer. So this worked nicely. Now I can pull the sleeve off. I already looked inside and got myself familiarized with a mechanism so I can now hopefully explain what's going on inside yeah quite some pieces that need to work together um, also the plug with this groove here is important uh, first of all that's a spring that goes here on the side and pushes against this piece of metal that wants to stick out so that goes on like this and the sleeve pushes against the spring and the spring pushes against this little piece here. So another important aspect is this cutout here in the uh, housing or in the yeah, Bible um, where this sticks out. Um, it fits together with a groove here that is interrupted by the key. So when the key is turned 90 degree, um, the plug turns and at 90 degree the key then uh, pushes against this piece of metal like so. And yeah, that's the way the plug or the key interacts with the mechanism and the needle goes in like here and maybe I pull out this piece here that you can look how this looks like. Um, looks like this. We have a little pin here next to a hole and yeah, it goes in like 
this, the pin goes in this hole and if there is no needle inside this whole uh, piece here can turn and wiggle um, around this pin but if there is a needle put inside then it aligns like this and then it must rotate around the needle. Alright, so let's put it back in. Now let's assume um, we have the needle not in place, so I simulate the spring here by pushing this in. You can see the holes are covered, so it's now currently locked up, so the other side um, would be locked in place. Even ah, this would normally stick out a little bit more. Uh, like so. And when the key now pushes this out of the way, you can see the inside. It moves a little bit, but it doesn't free the holes. But now let's put in the needle or the, the nail in this case. Remember this now goes all the way through, through the hole in this uh, piece here. And now you can see it sticks out. And now when I simulate the key, it now completely frees up the holes. This comes out a little bit, but we remember that there is a spring on top. So the spring then compresses and when the needle is removed, the spring tension pushes this back. Uh, if I get my screwdriver placed right, pushes this back. Come on. like so, and the holes are then blocked again. So pretty cool mechanism that actually works by changing the point of rotation when putting in this needle, because <laughs> this goes in the hole and now the whole thing here must rotate around this uh, needle and then when the key turns and pushes this piece out of the way it frees up the holes. Pretty cool. Yeah, Talon Pick, that was a, a very interesting lock to explore. Thank you very much for sending it to me. Um, i show you the whole thing here with all the parts that belong together. Yeah, again Talon Pick, thank you very much for sending this lock to me. And everybody else, thanks for watching and until we meet again, happy picking, cheers and bye bye.